good morning. I went to bed with wet hair last night. Can you tell? <laughs> a little bit insane. Um, so I've had quite a few people that have joked around with me about um, wishing they could be a fly on the wall to see how we do everything that we do. And uh, I decided that this morning I was gonna show you <laughs> kind of how we do all the things that we do. And so I'm gonna share a little bit of our morning routine with you. Um, one thing I wanna point out, I'm gonna set my coffee down here. One thing I wanna point out is that um, my mom and I usually share the morning stuff. Um, we all work full time in this household. So even though we have the urban homestead, we're pretty busy, you know, outside of this. Plus I'm a children's pastor, we all work in ministry. And so a lot of the responsibilities are shared, but really what happens is whoever has to leave last is the one that does all the animals in the morning and so and making sure they're taken care of so right now my mom has to leave here at 7 30 and um i don't have to leave here until almost eight so i've been taking care of the animals and you know it's no big deal so we have a routine we have a system and so i'm going to share that with you this morning are you ready let's go Okay, so my mom and I do things backwards because she starts with the chickens. I actually start with the rabbits and work my way down um, because y'all, when I let the chickens loose, it's like releasing the hounds. They're all under my feet and everything else. So I take care of the rabbits first, then the quail, then the baby meat chickens that we have, and then the big chickens. So um, we're starting with Oreo. This is the Oreo right here. So I'm gonna um, go ahead and get him some water and I'm gonna get the girls over there some water and then I'll give them hay and uh, rabbit pellets um, for their morning feeding. Look, he's so excited. He knows what's coming. This is his favorite part. His favorite, favorite part. This is morning feeding. There you go, Oreo. I don't have treats for you right now, though. He's looking for herbs. I give him sometimes, um, like, oregano and some other herbs, and so he, he's come to think that that's what I'm going to bring him now. All right, so now I've got the rabbits done, so I'm moving on to the quail. I'm going to start with our blue celadon egg layers and our white jumbo that we put in here. So I'm gonna turn this around so you can see. So these guys right here, the first thing I do is remove this tray. We have um, another cover that I'm gonna put on here today for them because it's gonna rain. But they like the air, they like the uh, free space and all that, so, and they're fully feathered. So that's our white jumbo. These are our blue celadon egg layers. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is give them water. So I'm gonna do that. We really like these waters right here. It makes it a lot easier. Fill them up. And then it's got like a gravity thing. I don't know if you can tell like right in there where it comes out. So it keeps it from overflowing. And then we're gonna get their food, which goes right in here. They actually still have quite a bit of food, so I think I'm just gonna top it off. And our food is getting a little bit low. Now, the thing about quail is they are real picky with their food. And so they tend to be a little bit wasteful if you put it in a, in a like a uh, container inside where they can kind of like pick and choose and be really picky. So we keep it in this cause it's got kind of like the individual little boxes and it helps keep food waste at a minimum. All right, now I've got the food for the um, other jumbo quail that we have on the other side of the yard and I've got the water. So I'm gonna just follow me over there and we'll feed them too.
Now, during the nighttime, because we have a couple quail in here, actually we have all but two of these guys, or three of these guys, I think, um, are only six weeks old. And so they still drink a lot of water. Um, and so we are right now putting the water in the, the coop when they're secured at night. But very soon we'll stop sending it in with them. It just helps keep things cleaner and they don't really need it because first thing in the morning we let them back out and we don't put them in until it's dark. So, and that's just to protect them from predators because the the coops are, are safe and they have the, um, what do you call it? The hardware cloth that's like this little really thin. So raccoons and possums can't get through it, but raccoons are really smart. And so there are times when they could figure out, you know, how to do that latch right there. They could figure out how to unhook it or the other ones. And so the other one we have, we can put a lot, but this one we custom built this part. And so we use old shutters. So there's not a way to really lock it. And so we do go ahead and secure them in there at night. All right now, so all the quail are done. Now, what I'm gonna show you next is a temporary setup because we are um, raising right now meat chickens that we hatched out. These are Cornish cross chickens. They're about, they'll be four weeks tomorrow actually. And we only raise them up to eight or nine weeks because they're bred for that. And then we'll process them for meat. And so when you see them, yes, they're cute, but they're not pets, okay? And we have this as a temporary setup because we only do this a couple times a year. We'll raise them up, process them and then put them in the freezer so or can them or whatever else we do so i'm going to turn this around so you can see the setup so right now we have them um in in a portable coop which i'm going to show you in a second but we cover them with a tarp because they're still pretty young they're not fully feathered yet but it's been like in the 60s at night here the last couple nights so they've been fine they huddle together but we did want to blot the wind a little bit and so that's why we put the tarp on it and this was to weight it down because there's a lid that comes up under here. And again, you know, we do protect them from predators. So, so I'm going to pull this off. And there they are. All right. These are the little guys. There should be eight in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, we got them all there. And so then now what I'll do is just like with the quail, and the um, rabbits, I'll get them feed and fresh water, and we'll be good to go. All right, their water thing is really big, so I had to fill it up in the hose. So I'm gonna walk it back over to them. And this, uh, is a little bit tricky it requires both of my hands to put it in that's why I wasn't recording while I was doing it let me see if I can manage it let's see I have this up on the stone because if I don't they end up with all kinds of straw and everything else in that water so but there they are a little meat chickens I'm like a That's mom. She's headed out to work. I got rice this morning. I got kitties to take care of this morning. Have a good day. All right. Love you. Love you too. All right. Now it's time for the final uh, animals outside, and that would be our glorious chickens that we raised from hatchlings. Uh, hatch yeah, they're hatchlings because they hatch out of an egg. So I'm going to turn this around so you can see. They are ready to come out for the day. They've been over here making all kind of noise trying to get my attention to let them loose there you go guys Got one two three four five six seven eight and they're off and this is why I wait until after I'm done feeding everyone to let them out because there is no stopping them they are quite literally on the run straight to the water All right, and then to feed them, all I do, I already gave them the water in here when I was walking by earlier. I filled their little bowl, but they also drink out of the pond. That's probably gonna change though, because we're gonna put a little, I don't know, they might still be able to drink out of it, but we're putting tilapia in there soon when it warms up enough. And we're gonna put like a bird net inside, like a couple inches down so they can't get the fish, but they might still be able to drink the water. But I'm just gonna show you, look, we have corn cob, 
deer corn that somebody gave us that was left over. And so they made their way back here and they, they opened the bag and found it. All right, so this is their feed. And they have these bigger bullets because they're bigger chickens. Now we used to, let me say this. So we used to feed them in a bowl and a nice little feeding dish and all that. And they would notoriously try to roost on the edge of it and knock it over. There were a couple times we watched Topaz or Sapphire Gym intentionally knock it over. And so now we don't put it in a bowl anymore because they don't want the bowl. They like to scratch it out of the dirt. So chickens are weird. All right, guys, here you go. Here you go. You gotta move some, put it down. Move. All right, it's fine. There you go. See? Perfectly content. Oh. All right, so that's, that's everything with the outside animals. Now I'm gonna take you inside and show you a couple things that I do um, also inside, not a super big deal, but it is still part of our animal care and, and important to do it. So follow me. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn this light on. These are the goldfish, some of them, the bigger ones right here that we have pulled out of our pond outside. And so um, we brought them in and set up this aquarium. So I'm gonna feed them. And they're hungry, you can see they go straight for it. It's so peaceful watching them. All right, now I'm coming over to this one. This is our tilapia pond, or like our tilapia tank. And I am not entirely sure how to work this light. Oh, Normally, Isaac turns this light on for me. And now I am not sure, let's see. There it is. Okay, now, I don't know if you can see, they like to hide there until I feed them. So I'm gonna open this lid up. Now we had a filter thing in here, but we lost three of the fish um, within 24 hours because they got stuck in it. So we, oh, I lose my light again. Hold on, let's see. So I'm going to um, feed them. Now the goal is for these guys to go out in the pond as soon as it's warm enough. I finally figured out the light. So what I'm giving these guys for now are bloodworms, um, but they are hanging out in the bottom because they're afraid of me hovering, hovering over the tank. But they are right there. And once I walk away and they realize there's food up there, they're gonna all uh, run up there and get it. Oh, there they go. But yeah, these guys are little right now they surely won't stay that way there they go food all right now the last thing i check here is my hydroponic setup sometimes my cherry tomatoes look all wilted and i realize for some reason the water is not getting through all the roots and so i have to hand water them but it's just because they're so big now and then i've got lots of basils and bok choys and lettuces and kale. So we have a lot growing. There's strawberries down there. Um, so basically what I'm checking here is to make sure that water, I have a nutrient solution that I make in here. And so I have to make sure that water stays over the pump in order for it to work properly. So I check that every morning. And then if I find that the uh, solution is gone or that it needs to be topped off, then I make some more with distilled water and then with my nutrient um, concentrate to make sure that the plants are fed what they need to be fed in the system. And then sometimes I also, sometimes I also need to water these guys here. Um, these are other herbs also that I use in cooking and some other things that I'm trying to propagate. All right, well, there you have it, folks. You guys have asked me 
what we do to maintain when we work full time and everything else. This is just our morning routine. It doesn't include anything with the garden. It doesn't include any food preservation, anything like that. But this is what we do every single day to take care of our animals and the plants on the inside. Um, now we do take full advantage of days off. So like yesterday and today, I've been out on a third quarter break from school because I'm a teacher. And so I teach at a private school, so I'm blessed with being able to have in a quarter breaks. And so we've been out here, you know, working on the pond. We just built the pond, so we were trying to get it established, the fire pit we were finishing. We have a lot of things that we've been working on, but we've been taking full opportunity when we're out of school for that. But now I can sit and enjoy the fruit of my labor and watch the chickens and the quail as they make their way around and just enjoy this time. And this pond right here, so those little tilapia that I showed you in the tank, they will go in here and they'll end up getting like, I don't know, I don't know if I can do this one handed. Let me see. Let me see if I can stabilize this to show you. So they'll they'll end up getting like, no, nah, I can't do it. They'll end up getting like a foot long, give or take, um, and weigh several pounds. So you buy them when they're really tiny, but they're not cheap. And so losing three of them was a really rough thing. And so we went ahead and took the pump out and that's what's in this pond now is the pump that was in the filter. And I think it's just because it was too strong in that tank. But when we realized how small they were, we were afraid to put them in here um, because we didn't want anything to happen to them. There's a couple of frogs that live in this pond and they would eat them right up. So we're gonna let them get a little bit bigger before we bring them out here. But yeah, this is the peaceful, you hear the birds chirping? 